Hey everybody, what's up? So recently I read a book called Personal Shrapnel by Greg from Simba Slayer. Sorry man, I should have asked you how to pronounce your last name. I think it's pronounced Murdow? Murdo? Um, sorry about that. There's three stories, Tommy's Winter, Cab Notes, and Heavy Damage. Heavy Damage is probably, I want to say, the least favorite of the stories. It's about two guys who basically use, uh, who work on railroad cars. And one of them is by the name of Casey Tripper. And Casey is an interesting, he is an interesting character. Um, the narrator is his friend, and the narrator basically decides he wants to become a journalist, right? And so he decides to leave. Casey gets mad at him. A series of events happen. He constantly blames the narrator. The narrator does try his best to figure out what's going on. And why Casey feels the way that he does. It's kind of sad and bittersweet. But I'm kind of on the fence about it. It is well written, but I, I have to say... It just seems a little weird to me. I don't know how to describe it. Um, the whole, hey, let's blame my friend thing, and especially the way it ends, I was kind of confused on. Um, I don't know if it's like in, in the way it actually ended or if there's something else going on. I don't know how to describe it. I think the way case it ends with Casey, um, let me see, wonder, did he pay for what he did or not, or by, you know, spending time or what? You have to read it. It's the only way I can describe it. Because Casey is such a weird character. Uh, my favorite is actually, and I think it's a tie between Cab Notes and Tommy's Winner. Cab Notes is about a guy who's basically a drug addict. And it is extremely well written. It's not as cliche as most people think would be. He basically decides that. And he has in his head that he's nothing. And the way Greg describes him as a meth addict. Um, how he just basically snaps. And he, you know, he thinks that he needs to do two certain things. You know, that he decides that these two things that he's done... He was meant to do. He's very self-destructive. The, the narrator of the story, not great. Um, just want to make that sure we know that. And the ending was a holy cow. Um, not one of those things that you would expect to see. The way he treats people. Everything that happens. And it's so disgusting descriptive it's more descriptive and well written than i'm sorry to say this heavy damage because in heavy damage some of the scenes could have played out a little bit more like in the, the description of you know, things that happened there's one extremely descriptive scene in heavy damage i mean we go wow just, just wow um in cab the narrator basically just the way he just you know he describes himself and the crimes that he commits and the reasons why he basically has this girlfriend named Michelle who you know she's a druggie as well um junkie whatever you want to call them how they treat each other how their relationship is like you know that she you know, she thinks that there are times when he's hiding drugs from her, so she steals from him, and but he steals from her. It's insane. It really is. It's one of the two that definitely I really enjoyed the most. Time East Winter is about this kid. This is what I would call the first place. And Greg agreed with this. Um, he even said it was his favorite. Time East Winter is about this kid by the name of Tommy, who's... Big fan of monster magazines. He loves that stuff. 
loves video games. His dad's like, they're going to rot your brain. He doesn't like them for whatever reason. And his mom's always like, oh, you know, don't let your dad know you're reading this stuff. And it starts off on Thanksgiving Day. And you find out Tommy's dad has to have, like, this perfect life. Everything has to be a certain way for him. And Tommy tries to figure it out. So he starts to notice the winter is getting worse and worse. In terms of snow, the way everything is. And it seems a little abnormal. Now, there's a reason why it's abnormal. But I'm not going to give it away. And Tommy's dad one day goes, hey, you know, I'm going to take you to work with me. And his mom's like, eh, it's boring. You know, what he does is just sits in front of a computer doing numbers all day. You don't want to go. Tommy's like, yeah, I want to go. Let's see what dad does. And there's this one day where his dad's kind of cranky. He's like, you know, we're just not himself. Tommy ends up going with his dad, and he finds out his what his dad's work entails, and why his dad hates these monster magazines and that. I don't want to give too much away, um, primarily because it's just one of those things. But at one point, Tommy wakes up, um, in his underwear. And here's this conversation going about being an alien in that. And it just reminded me of Back to the Future where Marty wakes up and you know, people think that he's, you know, they're, they're not sure about him. It just reminded me of that. Um, it's just kind of, it was, it was funny to me. And one of the things is, Tommy learns more about the world of monsters than he expected he really did. And he learns why his dad, I think I'm repeating myself, the way his dad feels. Because dad works for a government group. So I'm going to say. So definitely, you know, if you go through order, um, before you get to the good stuff, I would definitely recommend reading Heavy Damage, Tommy's Winter, and then Cab Notes. Cab, I mean. Um, because that's probably the best order to read them in, because you want to save kind of the good stuff for the end. Um, no offense, Greg, everything is well written, but that is the way that I view it. Um, but, you know, thank you for letting me know about writing it, and I hope you know, to see more from you in the future. I would definitely say, you know, if you want to read the good stuff first, just start with Tommy's Winter, which is the first story. Um, the one thing is the other two are very much different, and they do deal with substance abuse. And one of the things is, especially with heavy damage, I will say that one goes into alcoholism on a level that I've never seen written before. So that one... Definitely, I think that one is why I liked it. Some of the description is kind of like off, and some of the story, you know, that's kind of like why it's not 100% my book. But it's understandable, you know, when you write a book and you release it, you know, you're thinking, okay, how much can I do? All right, that's it, everybody. I'll talk to y'all later. Take care. Bye.